Let them come to the water. Bring the ones who are laden. Bring them all to the Lord. When the children are Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, we gather again amongst the many intentions that we put before the Lord today. We pray for those who are celebrating for their birthday in a special way, Vincent Thomas, Cecilia Venn, and those that the good Lord have called before us, Sister Midrand and Patrick Co. And Patrick Co. Onel. Today we come before the table of the Lord to give thanks and praise to God for all the gifts that He has given us. We come to celebrate the love of God as all the readings are suggesting that the good Lord will never leave us deserted. We come to thank Him. We come to present our petitions and our prayers. And we come to Ask him to quench that thirst of healing that we are all looking for. And for the times where we have doubted God, especially during these difficult times, for the times we have doubted that the good Lord will heal us, will sustain us, will take care, good care of us, we pause for a moment and ask for God's mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who live and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Come to the 
the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not real? And your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen physically to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live and I will make with you an everlasting covenant my steadfast, merciful love for David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You open your hand, Lord, and you satisfy us. You, you open, open your, your hand, hand Lord, Lord, and, and you, you satisfy, satisfy us. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. You open your hand, Lord, and you satisfy us. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You open your hand, Lord, and you satisfy us. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him, who call on him in truth. You open your hand, Lord, and you satisfy us. I have read from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. He withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place apart. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the town. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a lonely place and the day is over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, <coughs> they need not go away, you give them something yourselves. They said to him, we have only five loaves and two fish. And he said to them, 
bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke and gave them the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to your Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, I have two points for my sermon this weekend, or this week, Sunday. The theme for my sermon is God's generosity. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, will agree with me when I say that the theme that seems to be uniting all the readings this weekend is clearly that of boundless generosity of God. God gives freely, and God gives in extravagant measures. This Sunday gospel, this Sunday's gospel on the multiplication of the loaves and fish, if I'm not mistaken, is the only reading that appears, or story that appears in all the four gospels. That is Matthew, Luke, uh, Mark, and John. In most cases, we get readings from the synoptics that come from time to time, and you don't find them in John. And this one, we also find it in the Gospel of John. I would like to believe that this is a special way to show us how important this reading it is. In today's liturgy, it is clearly, or it clearly comes out as a fulfillment of the first reading that we have just heard from Isaiah, in which the Lord invites us to eat and drink for free prophetic words of the salvation offered by the Messiah, a tangible proof of God's love for us, God's generosity. In, in this context, we understand the second reading, wherein St. Paul crowns his exposition with a hymn uh, to the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. The one who invites us in the first reading the one who provides in the gospel, and St. Paul tells us that no matter what is happening, God will always provide for us. As we reflect upon God's generosity, we realize that Jesus did not only preach the word of God, but also multiply the bread for the people to eat and be satisfied. He did this miracle, if not mistaken, to build the faith of the people, but also to build or to provide for their bodily need. The Bible recorded at least two events where Jesus Christ performed this miracle uh, of feeding the people. Other times he simply dismisses people or do whatever that he needs to do and then dismisses people. And as other scholars have suggested or have argued that this might mean that Jesus is more interested in the spiritual need of people than the physical need. That is why there are so many uh, 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 um, events, miracles, parables, where he takes care of our spiritual needs more than our physical need. Where he healed the sick, cast out the demons, made the lame walk, restored sight to the blind, made the deaf to hear, raised the dead, and did other miracles out of his passion to make sure that you are all okay. That is what I would like to believe that Christ today is calling us to do. Yes, he will provide as he's providing for our physical need. But I believe that today is calling us when he says, come to me and express your thirst, your hunger of healing, the spiritual healing I will, I will, I will give to you. Come to me, all those who are thirsty, then tell me what you need me to do then I will provide for you. I would like to believe that 
these readings today, in as much as they call us and, pro and portray this Father who takes care of our needs, physical need, more than anything, especially during this time, Christ needs to hear from us what we need. My second point, I would like us to reflect on the actual miracle itself. With this miracle, which says a lot about Eucharist, and I will not dwell too much into that, simply because it's not fair, we know how many, how people hunger to come and receive, and we cannot be together. But amongst many other things that this miracle brings to our attention, is that it teaches us that God actually is a God who is expecting us to share whatever we have. One, a compassionate God to trust and willingness that is expected from us. I'm sure most of us now are praying, I'm not the only one, for a miracle to take place that the pandemic or the sickness goes away. And this, today's liturgy, we have a miracle. And what is important for me about this miracle is that for Christ to perform this miracle, what miracle? To feed the people after he has healed them from their physical needs, then he needs to provide for them. But for him to perform this particular miracle, he needed someone else to help him perform the miracle. Namely, the disciples come to him and complain to him that tell the people to go away. He says to them, he seems at first to be running away from the responsibility. He says to them, you give them yourself something to eat. Don't send them away. You do something. And I would imagine as a disciple, you are the master, you are the one. You ran away uh, from weeping after you have heard that your brother, your friend is dead. You came here, people followed you. Instead of resting, taking care of yourself, you heal these people the whole day. Now they have nothing to eat. We are telling us to give them something. Where would you get something? That's the first point from the actual miracle itself. Then they tell him that we do not have what it takes or we do not have enough. We only have something. Can we go and buy? They said, no. Do not go and buy. Do not go and do anything. Give them yourself. They said, we only have the little one. Uh, the, little, the, 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 the loaves and the fish. Then he said, bring it to me so that I can multiply and everyone eats. And I think as we all during this time pray for the miracle, for this virus to go away, for our lives to come back to normal, we need to help God to perform the miracle. We need to play our own role so that God or Jesus Christ can perform that miracle. In as much as he said to the disciple, what do you have? Bring that what you have then I can multiply. We need to ask ourselves a question. Am I contributing towards the betterment of our life or not? Am I following the rules and the regulations so that we can become a better community or I'm simply ignorant of what is happening? Am I still following when they ask me to take care of myself, when they ask me to put on the mask, when they ask me to wash it, or it's just a virus that kills whoever. Am I playing my role so that God can perform the miracle? A miracle takes two things. We need, like the disciples, to trust in God, to be willing to work with God so that this pandemic, this illness, this virus can go away. Am I helping God with my time some people will say, Father, we don't have anything. I don't have anything to give to the poor people. People are hungry outside. People are losing their jobs. People have nothing to eat. I do not have something to eat. I do not have food. I do not have something to share. But we do have time. There are so many people in our community that are struggling. Last month, if I'm not mistaken, I think we had about 12 funerals in our community. And all those funerals, I'm definitely sure that most people need prayers now. That is why we are saying I'm meeting the Lord by offering my time since I'm able to pray I don't only pray for my own needs, I pray for the needs of others. Some people lost their husbands, lost their fathers, lost their mothers, their grannies some do not even know what to do how to move on with life some lost the breadwinners at home when they pray they send whatsapp or facebook inbox asking what prayer must we pray for that is where we are, we are supposed, all of us, to say, 
Here I am, Lord, offering my time for those who need. For, our, for God to perform the miracle, we need to offer something. We need to be positive about what is happening. We need to educate one another. Some people always complain about life. Those who are on social media or on WhatsApp, post something that is positive. Even though life is so difficult, this is not the end of the world. Someone would need to hear a word or read on Facebook or WhatsApp status, something that is positive. That is what you are contributing in helping the other people have a better life. He may not come physically to give us bread and fish, but he depends on us to make the life of others better. Sometimes we need to educate one another of what is happening in our lives. So I would like to believe that the second point of my sermon this week, Christ is saying to us, I am hearing your prayers. The first reading comes when the people are in exile. Now he's bringing them back. He's saying to all of us, whatever is happening now, I know that people need me. But I need you to trust me first. I need you to work with me in order to heal someone else. So let us allow ourselves that this Sunday be a Sunday we are positive. This Sunday be a Sunday where we start to pray for other people. This Sunday be a Sunday where we start being positive and sharing the good news. This Sunday be a Sunday where you educate other people. I'm sick and tired. I don't want to die. To talk about coronavirus, even what we see when you go for a funeral, people not wearing masks, no sanitizer, this and that. But I would like to believe that this is about time now where I start practicing it myself than telling people what to do. Even at home, it's a reality. But for God to feed us and to take care of us, we all need to work together. And in conclusion, I like the second reading uh, when St. Paul put it, puts a question, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. I may not know all the current difficult situations we are all going through or you are all going through right now. Is it a health problem, family problem, unemployment, or even spiritual problem? Are you heartbroken? Have you been disappointed by people you trusted so much? Have, you, have your parent or your child or neighbor relative turned against you? Have you even disappointed yourself? Have you prayed so much and yet it seems as if God is nowhere to be or God is not listening to you? I can assure you that we are still more than conqueror through Christ who loves us. This is the time where we need to rely on Christ. This is the time where we need not to let go. This is the time where we need faith for ourselves for our brothers, for our sisters, even this pandemic, even this situation, even this time where we cannot worship together, receive, would not separate us from the love of God. Let us all have faith, let us all believe, and let us not give up because it's not the end. Nothing, nothing will separate us from the love of God. In short, Christ is calling us to work with him. Do your part. Listen to other people. Appreciate what others are doing. Be positive. Secondly, no matter what situation you are facing, let that situation not separate you from the love of God. stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he came, became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And the Lord, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world. To the Lord of kindness and compassion, to the Lord of justice and mercy, to the Lord who is near to us, let us present our petitions. For our church and parish community, that we may share joyfully with the poor, the hungry and the forgotten, all that God has given to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our bishops, priests, deacons, and ministers, that they may teach us that the Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of government and nations, that they may work to ensure the blessings of food, water, and health care for every member of the human family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We, for those who grow, produce, and prepare our food, that they may see their work as a sacred trust from God the giver of all good things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those on the margins of society, for cultural and ethnic minorities in our community, for those who are physically and mentally challenged, that they may find welcome and purpose among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Brenda Elizabeth Brown, Anthony Martin Elizabeth Brown, that they may make their places in the banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the abundance of your kindness, O Lord, hear our prayers. May we give you thanks for what you have given us by giving joyfully to others. May we embrace your spirit of love by loving one another with selflessness and compassion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread you offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always in every way to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we all acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Archbishop, Duncan, Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph the Most Chaste Spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Catherine, Saint Eugene, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to call us within our life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grant us the crown peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, in graciously granted peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us pray God's peace on our world. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will not thirst. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope everyone is still well at home. Uh, today is the first of, of August, or second of August, first Sunday in August. Um, last month we lost in our community, as you will see on our leaflet, about 12 people, members of our community. And that's a lot. And we continue to ask you to pray for the family, uh, all the families of our brothers and sisters who have gone before us and to continue to support one another. COVID is real. Even when you go for funerals, let us try to, to, to practice what we've been asked to do, people of God. Um, uh, be in a good space, keep the distance, have your mask, whatever we are asked to do so that we can try and uh, assist the health, uh, health workers in doing and dealing with this pandemic. And for those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversary during the month of July, God bless you. We pray for you. So if it was a birthday in July, I pray for every day for the Patrick does. Uh, and for those of us, we'll also pray for you when we finish uh, at, towards the end of the month. Thank you very much for your support towards myself and Father Patrick, for your caring, for checking on us and to making sure that we are okay, we are alive and we exercise or do our job accordingly, we really, really appreciate the support of each and every one of you, more than anything, for the prayers. Thank you, God bless you, and then stay safe. And welcome back to the Diki. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us continue to praise God with our lives. Thanks be to God.